Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I finally finished leveling up the Fireburst character to the point that I was finally able to put a staff on and be able to use Fireburst. So it's been a pretty pleasant experience leveling this character. I think it took around like three and a half to four hours to get to map and be able to do all the passive skill points. I still need to do Uber Lab, but I'm gonna go over some of the cheap ass leveling gear that I use for this journey and what's actually good for this character but yeah pretty good fire burst is actually op for the amount of investment i think it's actually probably really really strong early on so as soon as you get the essence i think your build will take off you only need a six socket the staff or bow and then you're off to the races pretty auto bomb play style so i understand what people say now when they say that the build literally plays itself you can just run around the map but today for the series, we are going to be looking at the Duelist Rips. So I'll look at that after I go over the Fire Burst. But Fire Burst is probably one of the smoothest lovely experiences that you could possibly have. It takes some of the best builds, which is Storm Blast Mines from 1 to 28. And the Armageddon Brand from 28 to 50. And then Fire Burst and either a Staff or Bow from 50 to pretty much the end of the game. And... Overall, this was really good, but I do think Fire Burst has trouble scaling to the late, 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 late game with insane damage for bossing and single target. And it is not exactly the cheapest build for late game because it is a cluster build. You will take these clusters here and clusters here. But I'm not really too sure about my direction with the current build, so I'm going to be playing a lot around with it and coming to a conclusion. But Fire Burst is the smoothest lovely experience I've had in PoE. I think it might beat out the Hollow Palm. I think the build is faster than the Hollow Palm. Or it's very very close. Because this is like a top tier racing build. Armageddon Brand and Storm Blast Mine. But Hollow Palm, they're both very very good. They're just a different play style, right? Because if you're playing like up here in the top tree, it's kind of hard to be doing Hollow Palm. This area is a lot better for Hollow Palm. Auto... I actually wonder if Fire Burst doesn't get nerfed. That just sounds wrong. Fire Burst is probably getting nerfed. But if it doesn't get nerfed, how it would be with Scion as a league starter? But obviously the Essence, I don't know when you would get it. But you could obviously Harvest swap it. But it remains to be seen how big the nerf is or if there is a nerf at all. But let's get into the Fire Burst character, the gear I use for leveling and some my uh, general philosophy I have with building the character. This character actually leveled pretty fast. Now I'm no like super speed leveler, but this character was able to finish most of the content, all passive points in like three and a half hours or so, which is not the fastest in the world, but it got the job done. So let's look at the cheap leveling gear I use. So basically I use a staff, Six linked, or not six linked, six socketed. You can actually use this fire burst staff at level 50. So, the level link progression of this build goes from Storm Blast Mine with Orb of Storms into Armageddon Brand at level 28 with Cremation for single target. And then, after that, you get fire burst at level 50, and the game is over pretty much. So, at that point, your character is a monster. And you pretty much just run around the mobs and the mobs tremble in fear and just ignite themselves and die. So that's basically the general gist of the playstyle. So you get the staff, you six socket it, then you put in swift affliction, unbound ailments, deadly ailments, ignite proliferation, burning damage, and immolate. And then you have wave of conviction. So this is what I have from before. So before when you're leveling, you always want to use wave of conviction with flammability. And then this will make it so that it will apply fire exposure and you will get minus fire res. Then I smoke mine here and then here I have the storm brand which I use to trigger the on hit with fire burst. The so storm brand linked with combustion and elemental proliferation. So basically the way this works is that storm brand only costs 17 mana. So we're using this thing called Chainbreaker. You'll notice that we have 50 Rage. Now, Berserk is honestly really fun to use. And once you have Mana Regen, you can actually stay Berserk for quite long. And even if you don't want to use Berserk, you can just run permanently faster because you have 50 Rage, right? So the reason why this works is you put down 
Stormbrand. Stormbrand only costs 3 rage because it's not a 6 link skill or something. Your rage does not really degenerate that much. At most, you'll probably cost some rage to like throw a smoke mine every now and then, but it's really not that bad. So this is how fast the character just is with uh, Lethal Pride. That's why I really like to incorporate like Rage and Berserk in builds because it makes the build just feel so much better even if it only gives us like move speed because I don't think like Rage really increases the cooldown recovery or anything for this build in terms of damage but just running faster is just faster map clear. So that's why I believe that cooldown recovery is probably a pretty big thing for this build and I'll probably try to prioritize it either by using like a Torrent Reclamation or trying to get it on boots but Hopefully the Berserk helps out a little bit in making this build feel a little tankier. And you can also use Vigilant Strike and because of Berserk it makes it so that you attack faster so it'll feel a lot better trying to get the Vigilant Strike out if you're using a staff. But like I said I'm going to be tinkering around with the build a lot more. I will be buying an Ember Wake Ring and Replica Ember Wake Ring because I just want maximum damage. Then we'll be using the Elder Gloves and we will want a lot of Elder stuff just because it allows us to get... Can you actually get a Elder Ember Wake Ring? Uh, that seems like it'll be very expensive. Because the gloves that I'm planning to use, the Elder Gloves, they give uh, fire damage multi for every... What's it called? For every Elder item that you have. And you also want these to be corrupted for Ellie Weakness, so I'll probably be doing that. So these pair of gloves are just extremely good. Moves and ailment when you use a flask of all equipped items or elder items. That's pretty sick, actually. So, definitely be using this. Man, I have a lot of these gloves, actually. Must be from all the failed elder attempts. But let me keep going over the rest of my gear. I use a plus one tabula for lovely, and I use some spell wands. So, these are the wands I use. They're just the craft that I told everyone about. A rare ruby ring with an alteration orb and magic wand gives you flat fire damage to spells. And this will carry you all the way to Fire Burst. Like, I don't even know if I should be, like, talking about the leveling process of this build because everyone says that Fire Burst will be nerfed, but in general, Stormblast Mine and Armageddon Brand, if untouched, should be the go-to way to level your build. Like, if Fire Burst is nerfed, you can probably play, like, Flame Wall Spell Slinger, which I might try out now that I'm an Elementalist. But I just use a rare uh, helmet for some resist, and I use this for some move speed. You should anoint freedom of movement. I use Barrex Respite and Barrex Pass for some flat damage to spells. I use 7 leak steps for the move speed. I use Headhunter because it was a cheap way to fix my uh, uh, stats, like dexterity requirement. And I would use Shadows and Dust just to get some Rampage action. So basically, you just get a lot of move speed, and it will be super, super fast. So let me show you how it looks like in Blood Aqueducts with, what's it called, with the Rage setup. So Lethal Pride you can use, and now you see the Rage regenerates pretty fast. So the way it works is that you regenerate 3 Rage per second, but skills cost plus 3 Rage. So usually, like, Chain Breaker is not really usable because you use a 6 link, but because of this skill, all you use is you use Stormbrand, and then you sip. pretty much rely on Herald What's of Thunder to pop the Fire Burst as you run through everything, so that's why it's called an auto bomber, right? So... Yeah, this is the build, right? I can kind of see why it's going to be nerfed, be but... Twice in a row? Maybe it won't get nerfed and I'll be able to play this, even on a Scion. Like, I feel like if, even if this was on a Scion, it would still be really strong. But basically, that's what it looks like. Really broken leveling experience, extremely enjoyable, probably... I don't know if it's... it's probably faster than Hollow Palm, right? So it's kind of crazy that there's actually a leveling experience faster than Hollow Palm. But it is what it is, right? So I hope that everyone's able to try it out if you're still trying to play the league a little bit. Try out Fire Burst leveling or maybe the build. It is very fun and I'm pretty excited to min-max the character. So this is pretty much going to be a build diary for Fire Burst for the next couple of days because I'll slowly upgrade the character and you can see my path of doing it. Yeah, so Berserk should be a big game changer and should make the build feel a lot better. I'm like a huge fan of Berserk because I know Winter Orb builds use the Berserk with zero cost of channeling skills too and it works very well. But yeah, let me get into the Duelist Rips and hopefully everyone tries out the Fire Burst character if you haven't already before it gets gutted.
So Duelist was the class that won it all in the gauntlet, so Grass, I'm Exile, and Karn also killed everything. I don't think anyone actually did the fear this time around. Yeah, fear would be pretty terrifying on, what's it called, on all mods. On, oh, no, not all mods, but on AoE. So I'm Exile, a lot of people saw this rip before, it is just the classic slam and dead. I don't really know if he misplayed or anything, I don't think so. He has fortify up, he has everything up. Is just getting hit by multiple things. I guess he could have pressed 4 to 5 focus, but that's just some insane damage for a character that's experienced at all. The Karn's rip, I don't even know what he died to, but is it Harvest? Oh, he's doing the invitation for the, what's it called? The distant memory maps. So this character is actually extremely tanky, 8.2k life. I think he just dies to getting shotgun by this thing, right? Yeah, he just got hit by three different abilities at the same time. And yeah, pretty unfortunate way to go out, but at least he already killed everything at that point. I don't know if I actually saw this rip before. Oh, this guy's doing Uber Aziri. So you can see most of the duelists are able to make it to doing the bossing phase. So this guy is insane. Usually people play this by like doing the earth shatter combo up here because the spikes will overlap. But I don't know what happened for a bad setup or something. This character is extremely tanky. Because he actually lives like a few fire flame blasts. Did he have berserk? This person doesn't even use rage tech to try to get the berserk at the start but... Props to him for trying to do the fight without some like super cheese method, but sometimes you might need to do the cheese to win the prize. Now I saw a darkish rip. This one is just a mapping rip, right? Yeah, he just walks. The this rip is so fast. There's nothing you can even do about it. Skier was not as like good as some of the other people's, but yeah, Drox is always very scary, even with champion with all the armor. Now Alkaiser's rip I saw before. So he's just doing the Shaper invitation and very sketchy situation, right? With overlapping rocks and so many abilities going out. He gets hit by the burrow of the Minotaur. He tries to log out. If he was a Slayer, he would have probably lived for sure because he would have regen his HP. Quadrix also tried playing a Slayer at the last minute, I think. Uh, it's another. Uh, this is Uber Aziri. Pretty scary. Trying to kill the titty bitch person, right? And the titty bitch just rains on his parade. Yeah, pretty unfortunate death. Maybe his damage was not good enough to instantly kill him. But that's actually very scary. Like, that's almost like a guaranteed death, I think, at that point. Once you get... What's it called? The titty bitch, like, just casting the rain. You're, like, bound to get hit by it sooner or later. This one is Katarina. Is this the one that he gets slammed? Oh yeah. Wow. What? Yeah, he was just outside the slam range. That's actually so big. Should have dashed one more time to be safe. That's why like I'm always scared of Katarina. But I finally know what the slam animation is. It's when he says, give your soul to me, and then you just log out. Heels. So this person, Tora is a very nice woman. The Tora probably shoved something very chaosy and killed him. The chaos damage is a pretty big issue because of the negative 20, so you actually start off with negative 80%. So is it time for Tora to own him? Hey, that was a little <laughs> slow log out. I don't really know like That was not like that crazy fast, right? But yeah, I don't know this person's chaos res, but it's not like he died like super super fast, right? So wait, where was this person's death? So this guy did he have a lot of chaos res? 17% there he has 30% chaos res. Yeah, this person had a lot of chaos res. The chaos damage didn't even do that much. 
But yeah, so this is Karn's Nutter Rip. I don't remember what this. Oh, this boss. So I remember this one. So he goes to the arena. Double boss, right? I don't even know what this boss does. No. But I guess there's some ground effect that does a lot of damage, just instantly kills you. But I think that's actually the last one. So most of the rips were from Karn, and not many people actually posted their duelist rips. But it's actually crazy, right? The first page of most people's, of all the other classes, ended at level 90. The first page of Duelist ends at 93. It's just a Duelist difference. But you can see most of the rips were the bossing. Some Katarina, some Shaper Invitation, a lot of Uber Zeris too. So, TLDR, Champion is overpowered. And it's actually funny that no one actually really played Champion and got more than 106 points besides the top two. Probably because everyone was terrified that I'm Exile, Karn, and Alkaiser, or Darky would probably just kill it all. But it shows that everyone can die. So I think we're only left with Templar and Scion for the next ones. And yeah, I'm looking forward to doing those. Because Templar actually, so we actually took the combined highest points. Templar is actually probably the highest. Which is pretty surprising because Templar is just a very good class. The ailment immunity from Arcane Surge and also the regen from Mom and Agnostic is just very, very strong. But yeah, let me go over the Fire Burst and my closing thoughts. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed the Duelist clips, but just wanted to go over this character a little bit more in terms of what I think will happen in 3.15. So in 3.15, it appears that this character will be nerfed. A lot of people say that Fireburst is broken. I'm like kind of on the fence about how good it is. It is very, very strong for running through. But its damage just can't be scaled very, very high. Like this is probably one of the highest pops I found with like 14 mil. Because it's not a crit skill, no matter what you do, you can't really increase the damage by so much. And... But it's, the playstyle is very, very smooth. Like all you do is you put down Stormbrand and you just run around in circles. I don't know if GGG likes that. A lot of people tell me that GGG might nerf it purely because they don't like builds that are that automated. They like builds that have more buttons to press now, which I can see because like, Mom is pretty high button with Arcane Cloak, Sigil of Power, and all that stuff. And so a Slam builds. I guess Aura Stacker is a build that has very few buttons to press. Fire Burst is probably up there with very few buttons to press. But build is definitely very strong for Lovely. I highly advise if you haven't tried it out to try it out before it is too late. So you can definitely see... You can actually use it to level early on. Man, it's so high damage at this level. But we'll see how it scales. I think Awakened Gems scale it a lot. I think Staffed actually does more damage, but... Bow, I think it's cheaper. It's a very expensive to buy a really expensive, a really good well roll staff with like double fire multi and fire and multi over overall. So I will be trying it out to see which is the better option. I think defenses this build will not be that great unless you are able to just vigilant strike fortify all the time, and it will pretty much come down to just getting really a lot of elder pieces. Because the elder pieces with the gloves should be really, really good. But it has a pretty smooth gearing curve. I do think the cluster jewels are kind of expensive. They're not exactly the cheapest. Because without cluster jewels, you run out of damage nodes to really take on the tree that are efficient. So you're pretty much forced to use cluster jewels to be able to scale your damage up. I guess you could probably drop one of the clusters in order to get more life if you want to make the build more hardcore friendly. Probably even look at maxing out your block with staff uh, or getting glancing blows. Uh, but those are all just like s suggestions that I have. This build will probably use Berserk, so it should feel relatively tanky. I wonder how long Chainbreaker can be kept up because I will be trying to get a lot of mana regen. Maybe even mana regen on boots, but I think flat damage is overpowered for this build. So I'll probably be getting some flat lightning damage if you haven't killed recently. A blue pearl amulet will be pretty good, so you get some, what's it called, some regen there. I don't know if you can get any regen on the helm, maybe. But 
this character should be really fun, so hopefully you guys follow along on the character's progression as I find the right uniques for it and the right setup. But this build really is not super fleshed out, there's a lot of options. Like most builds that you go look up, people will tell you, oh, this weapon type is better, but the fact that staff and bow is like a pretty big debate still. Um, and like the rings, a lot of people use, some people use two ember wake rings to have two ignites, some people don't. In the end, I think it just comes down to how much tankiness you're willing to sacrifice. So let me know in the comments below if you have any tips or tricks for my build because I would like to make the best version of it before it gets nerfed. I might try it with an aura stacker, but I don't really think an aura stacker is that good because you don't really gain anything from stacking auras, but you never know. Maybe the anger flat damage to spells is really crazy and you can smite with the staff or something. But be sure to follow, and like, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I will be streaming every day on Twitch this character until it gets like level 95 or something. But thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time. And I hope you find more meters and exalts than I do.